Hi there, my name's Kaz McLean. In this presentation, I'm going to take you through the exciting journey East Gippsland Shire Council has been on with the community to plan for the future through the development of their new council plan 2021-25. I'll start off by giving you some important contextual information. Then I'm going to take you through the process for developing the council plan. I'm going to cover the process used um, to engage the community in the development of the council plan. And then I'm going to show you what the council plan has ended up looking like. And then finally, I'll conclude with some information about the way East Gippsland Shire Council is going to keep the community informed with their progress. Let's start off with the context. Understanding the role of council is a really important part of this presentation. Council is one of three levels of government that also includes the state government and the federal government. Council's role is primarily about setting the overall directions and strategic objective for the municipality. Also really important is that they monitor the implementation of the strategic objectives and report on the success to the community. Importantly, Council provides services to approximately 47,000 residents and 4,000 businesses. And often, Council does not have direct control over many of the key challenges facing the community. The role of Council can be best understood as provider, where they directly provide services or infrastructure projects, advocate, where Council advocates on behalf of the community for funding and the delivery of services or infrastructure that they don't have available to them. Commonly, this advocacy um, involves the state government and federal government where they're often asking for extra funding to support the East Gippsland area. Council can also facilitate positive outcomes for its community by building relationships, changing regulations, promoting opportunities, and building the capacity of the community members and organisations to respond to issues and challenges themselves. This slide presents Council's strategic planning framework. This strategic planning framework is a requirement of the Local Government Act, which governs many of the work that most of the work that Council does. What you can see on the slide there in front of you, indicated by the stars, is the community vision and the Council plan. They're the key strategic documents that Council's been working with, with in partnership with the community over the last few months to develop, to help plan for the future. The community vision is, is a 20 year plan for East Gippsland Shire, but can sometimes be 10 to 20 years. And then the Council plan, which covers the next four years for the East Gippsland Shire. The strategic planning framework also explains the way other key plans and strategies are involved. And you can see on the second line down there, the budget under the four year column and the workforce plan and the revenue and rating plan. The budget is really critical as that ensures that council has the funds to deliver the council plan. The community vision 2040 is a long-term vision and it expresses the aspirations, values and priorities of the East Gippsland Shire community. It's a really important strategic document and it informs all of the decisions that Council makes and as well as broader partnerships that the Council might have with the community, with government and other community agencies. The community vision sets some ambitious goals for Council. They're not short term, they're long term goals. And it provides a framework for Council to work with the community to collaborate to help make East Gippsland Shire the place everyone wants it to be. The community vision isn't just Council's responsibility and it, and it provides a platform for Council to collaborate with community, regional, partnerships and their advocacy work. The Council Plan 2021-25 reflects the Councillor's vision for the next four years. The strategic objectives contained within the Council Plan align with the community's values and priorities that are articulated in the community vision. Importantly, the Council Plan articulates the way Council will contribute to the achievement of the community's vision between 2021 and 25. Now we'll cover off on the process for developing the Council Plan. In December 2020, Council commenced community consultation. 
Between December and February 2021, Council asked the communities what they valued most about living in East Gippsland, what their vision was for the future, and the opportunities and challenges that were faced by the community. Over 470 community members provided their feedback through both a community survey and also a series of workshops that were held across the municipality. In February 2021, a community panel was formed. They're a group of 15 volunteers who represented a range of community perspectives from different demographics, sectors and interest groups within East Gippsland. They considered the feedback provided through the community consultation project process um, in order to determine five strategic themes, values and priorities that were then included in the refreshed community vision. They also provided recommendations that have formed the foundation of this council plan. The council plan then identifies how council will contribute toward achieving the community's vision between 2021 and 2025, and also how we will measure the plan's success. Now I'm going to take you through the process used to develop the Council Plan's strategic objectives and strategies and how community engagement was so critical to that process. On the left of the slide, you can see the priorities that were identified by the community through the consultation process. The first key, key priorities that came through the consultation process related to an inclusive and connected communities. The community told us that having a safe, diverse, inclusive, connected and caring community was really important. They wanted recognition and support for the wide range of community groups, such as the arts community. Strategic Objective 1 has been developed based on that feedback. Strategic Objective 1 in the Council Plan focuses on an inclusive and caring community that respects and celebrates diversity. There's a strategy that sits under Strategic Objective 1 that focuses on Council striving to provide equitable access to their services, support and facilities. Strategy 1.2 focuses on collaboration with key stakeholders to foster the cultural, arts and creative communities. What this slide demonstrates is the way the priorities that were collected through the community engagement process were then used to inform the development of the Council plan. On the left hand side again, you can see that natural disasters emerged as a key priority through the community engagement process. In particular, the issues identified were preparedness for natural disasters, emergency management and recovery. Then on the other side of the slide, again, you can see the detail relating to strategic objective two. You can see here how that feedback relating to natural disasters then informed the council plan. Strategic Objective 2 focuses on planning and infrastructure that enriches the environment, lifestyles and the character of our communities. Strategic, strat, there's a strategy 2.3 that's included in the Council Plan that specifically focuses on planning with local communities for natural disasters and emergencies. Again, you can see the relationship between the feedback that was provided through the, council plan, through the community engagement process and the way it has then informed the Council Plan. I'm going to move through a series of slides that demonstrate this because sometimes it's really difficult to understand how your feedback has been used to inform the council plan because sometimes it can look a little bit different. So while the community consultation has been received and the results considered, council then has to think about how they can best reflect that in the council plan. Let's take a look at some of the other slides that demonstrate this kind of a process. On the left hand side, you can see that land use planning for a sustainable community was an important priority that came through the community engagement process. Strategic objective two, again, planning and infrastructure that enriches the environment, lifestyle and character of our communities is the place where land use planning for a sustainable community has been reflected. Strategy 2.2 is the interpretation of that community engagement result. Statutory and strategic planning for land use delivers sustainable outcomes that balance the need for growth with the enhancement of our lifestyle, character, the built and natural environment. A real challenge for Council is receiving community engagement results and then working out 
in consideration of their role, how they can best reflect that in the council plan. The next key priority that was identified through the community engagement process was housing to meet diverse and changing needs. In particular, the community identified the importance of affordable housing um, that, that addressed housing and living affordability needs. Strategic objective one has incorporated this sentiment and this idea um, in the strategic objective that focuses on an inclusive community that respects and celebrates diversity. Strategy 1.1 focuses on target, targeted services and ag advocacy to support physical health, wellbeing and resilience. And this is where affordable housing will fit in terms of council's role and work over the next four years. On the next slide, the key priorities that came through the community engagement process are articulated on the left. Transport was really important. Maintaining council's road infrastructure was a key priority. Improved and accessible public transport and connectivity was also really important to the community as reflected through the community engagement results. On the right hand side, you can see the way that that issue of transport has then been reflected more broadly in the provision of infrastructure as part of strategic objective two. That's a really important thing to remember. Sometimes that minute detail of the feedback that's provided through a community engagement process isn't specifically mentioned in the council plan. And this is because strategic objectives and strategies need to be broad enough to reflect the broad nature and role of, of council's work and allow them to, to almost be able to reflex, flex and respond to emerging needs as well. So strategy 2.2 then, instead of just relating to transport, talks more broadly about infrastructure provision and maintenance to support a diverse range of current and future user needs and activities that is both environmentally and financially sustainable. On the left of the slide, local services and support was really important to the community as reflected through the community engagement results. The community really wanted services and support for the diversity of the community so that people could live out their whole lives in their local communities, whether this be ageing in place or young families and children. Again, Strategic Objective 1 and Strategy 1.4 that focuses on targeted services and advocacies is where this priority is reflected. Environmental sustainable sustainability was another very high priority for the community. And in particular, they wanted protection and preservation of the natural environment. Strategic Objective 3, a natural environment that is managed and enhanced reflects this priority. Strategy 3.2 specifically refers to sustainable land use practices that are used to manage council land and support the management of private land to protect biodiversity. Climate change was another really important issue that came through the community engagement process, particularly reducing climate change, carbon emissions and increasing recycling. Strategy 3.1 focuses on Council's work to reduce its own and the community's carbon emissions, while also strengthening the community's capacity to mitigate the impact of a changing environment. Tourism including ecotourism, adventure tourism, as well as infrastructure needed and, and accommodation, bike and walking trails were all identified as important in priorities through the community engagement process. Strategic objective four in the council plan, a thriving and diverse economy that attracts investment and generates inclusive local employment is where that focus on tourism is reflected, specifically through strategy 4.4, with a tourism sector investments where is saw in business capability, product development and experience to meet the changing needs of domestic and international markets. Local employment was particularly important to all of the community. They were looking for a thriving local business sector and local jobs, diverse industries to provide employment opportunities for all, particularly young people. Strategic objective four again is where this focus is reflected. In particular, strategy 4.2 and strategy 4.3 focus on um, entrepreneurship, partnerships, new business opportunities, um, leadership and strategic um, and strategic work and enabling economic prosperity, investment and growth. This is where local employment is reflected. 
the community were keen to see customer focus where there was a responsive, meaningful and timely communication between council and uh, the community. They wanted some processes simplified and improved, particularly for statutory planning to enable development and local business to thrive and prosper. Strategic objective five is where this key priority is reflected in a transparent organisation that listens and delivers effective, engaging and responsive services. They wanted the community to be engaged in decision making. They wanted a council that engages the community. Strategic objective five is where this priority is reflected, in particular, strategy 5.3. So what does the council plan look like as a whole? So what you can see on this slide is, is just a snapshot of the, of the structure of the council plan. At the top of the slide, you can see the council's vision for the next four years, where East Gippsland, an inclusive and innovative community responding to challenges, fully valuing our environment and creating the conditions in which communities can thrive. There are a set of five strategic objectives of which I've touched on in the earlier slides when I've tried to explain the relationship between the community engagement feedback and then where they've been reflected in the council plan. There are five key strategic objectives and you can see each of those there. I've mentioned them briefly in relation to the community engagement feedback. Sitting under each of the five strategic objectives are a set of strategies and strategic indicators the strategies tell us how we're going to deliver or achieve those objectives and the strategic indicators help us measure our progress. At the end of the council plan, there's a section on and how council will monitor the progress towards delivering on that vision for the next four years and the achievement of the council plan. This is the way the strategic objectives and the strategies are look in the council plan itself. I'm not going to take you through all of the detail of this, but this is, I wanted to show you this though, so that you could see that this is how it all ends up. After councils looked at your, your feedback, as was reflected in the earlier slides, and they've developed some strategic objectives and strategies, they've then presented it in this way. And what you can see on the page here is, as I said, at the, the top, the strategic, the strategic objective is described. For here, you're seeing strategic objective one, which is about an inclusive and caring community that respects and celebrates diversity. Importantly, this strategic objective descri describes the action council will take towards the achievement of the community vision theme, our people. On the left-hand side, you can, see the, you can see the detail of the strategies that council has committed to delivering. In the middle, you can see the role of council, and I talked to you about that earlier, the role, their role of either provider, facilitator or advocate. And then on the right hand side, you can see the strategic indicators. And so that's how you measure how well, how council is delivering on the strategy. So for the first one, strategy 1.1, council strives to provide equitable access to their services, support and facilities. They're a provider in that space. So you can see in the middle there that we've listed council's role, provider. And the strategic indicators include community satisfaction with equitable access to services. So we'll be asking the community about your satisfaction with the way they're delivering on strategy 1.1. We'll also collect some data around the utilization of swimming pools to help measure that. And we'll also get some community satisfaction results in regards to the recreational facilities that are provided within the community. I'm just going to take you through each of the strategic objectives, I'm not going to look in detail at each, but I want to show you what they look like so you know how to navigate the council plan when it's released. So on this page, you can just see strategic objective two. So they all follow the same format. And hopefully now you get to have a little bit of an understanding around the journey from community engagement right through to the development of the council plan. So strategic objective two, focuses on planning and infrastructure that enriches the environment, lifestyle and character of our communities. This strategic objective describes the action council will take towards the achievement of the community vision theme, our place. Again, the detail of the strategies are on the left, council's roles in the middle, and then the strategic indicators are on the right. 
strategic objective three, a natural environment that is managed and enhanced. And this strategic objective describes the action council will take towards the achievement of the community vision, our environment. Again, strategies on the left, council's role in the middle and strategic indicators on the right. Strategic objective four, a thriving and diverse economy that attracts investment and generates inclusive local employment. This, this strategic objective describes the action council will take towards the achievement of the community vision theme, our economy. And strategic objective five, a transparent organisation that listens and delivers effective, engaging and responsive services. This is an important strategic objective as in many ways it provides the foundation for the delivery of the other strategic objectives outlined in this, in the council plan. This strategic objective describes the action council will take as the foundation for the council plan and their contribution towards the achievement of the community vision. Now I'm going to take you through the way council is going to monitor their progress. Each year to support the council plan, East Gippsland Shire Council will develop an annual action, action plan and that will have some real detail around the action they're going to take to deliver on all of their commitments in the council plan. They'll develop the annual budget which will describe how they will resource the work they're going to do. I've talked to you about the indicators that are included in the council plan and they're listed there next to the strategies and they're there to measure the progress against the, the strategies. Council will communicate with you about that progress quarterly through their progress report and also through the annual report. To ensure continuous improvement, there's an annual community satisfaction survey and some of those results will, will be used to measure the success as part of the indicators. That community satisfaction survey will also give, provide some data about the life in the municipality and satisfaction with council services. It will help keep council on track to inform the annual action plan and ensure they're continuously improving the services that, services that they provide to you. That brings me to the end of the presentation. I hope it's been useful. I really encourage you to uh, have a look at the draft documents online to search out the revised Community Vision 2040 and the Council Plan 2021-25 and find out what your council is committed to do to bring your community vision to life. Thank you.